Hello and welcome backstage with Andrew Peregrine here at the Miskatonic Playhouse. We have the Chaosium freelance author and dun, 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 author of the upcoming Regency setting book that we're all very, very excited about. So Andrew, welcome to the Playhouse. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And um, do you know that we, we've, we I am, as we have discussed behind closed doors very very excited about uh regency coming out uh mm. and the playhouse is very excited um mm. but we've got a lot of excited people and there's uh some lot of exciting questions so if you're happy to we're just going to jump straight in absolutely okay so our first question is what is it about the regency era setting that you find most interesting and as a little side note, uh, what would be your advice to players and keepers who are maybe playing it for the first time? And this is from Pete, uh, who is one of the, the the backstage team at the Playhouse. Excellent. Well, it's it's one of those. I mean, like I fell in love with the whole setting to a certain, a certain degree, so it's kind of everything. Um, and it's been there's a long conversation of my relationship with Jane Austen, not my actual relationship with Jane Austen. That would be <laughs> wrong. Sometimes. Um, but I, I didn't really get into Jane Austen when I read Pride and Prejudice at school. Um, I got into her with reading Northanger Abbey, and that just hooked me. And then from there, I kind of, the veil came down, and I sort of saw what Jane Austen was actually all about. It's not pretty romance stories. It's deeply biting satire. And, you know, when you look at the individual words and where she's put together, the most innocent sentences become the most uh, horrifically biting, scathing <laughs> comments on a society. Um, from a gaming point of view, what I particularly like about what I say I like and don't like, you know, I don't like morally, but I like as a gamer, um, is the constrictions of society. There are so many rules uh, for men and women, although a lot more for women. Yeah. And it's how people work within those that becomes interesting in the game. So sort of this ties into giving you advice for it. But while it's very tempting as a modern player to go, and it's fine to do this as well, to go, you know what, this is horribly sexist and, you know, I'm going to let women have a bit more freedom. I'm going to, you know, let people, you know, do a bit more of what they want to do and forget all this sort of stuff, sure. oh, you can't say that to them. Actually, when you keep it in, you get some interesting situations like, you know, you've just seen a Cthulhu monster and you're terrified and you've, you've lost, you know, Nyon lost your mind, but you've got to have tea with Lady Bridgewater. So you've got to hold it together and you can't possibly blurt out in the middle of tea, there's a monster in your garden because that would be dreadfully awful and she might not invite you back to tea anymore. So holding those things are how people are trying to hold this. I mean, to a certain degree as well, these, this immense passion and enthusiasm and yeah. you know, whatever's going on in them. I like, because that, that's not changed as a human. We've been that way all the time. But all this sort of held in, I would think, it leads to greater passions and enthusiasms and things. I mean, this is one of the things in Regency why dancing was so exciting for young people. Do you think of it? You know, these days, you know, yeah, yeah, we go to the disco, yeah, we yeah, had dance, yeah. I asked her, she said, yeah, we're great. You know, it's, in, I mean, those sort of things haven't changed. But you forget in Regency times when the shocking, shocking um, new movement of the waltz, where you would actually put your arms around each other. <gasps> oh my God. Um, you know, even if you're, you know, you're still like at arm's yeah. length with your arms around each other, the fact that you're in phys just bare physical contact with a member of the opposite sex was electrical at yeah. that time, given how yeah. separate. Well, so it's all of those things that we don't sort of see so much today, but at the time were quite massive. Yeah, the, the bubbling passions underneath, you know, the things people want to say and they can't say. Um, I mean, even in a lot of Jane Austen novels, you have things like where someone like Darcy, for instance, Pride and Prejudice, doesn't say, oh, I've done this wonderful thing. You're going to think better of me. Elizabeth has to find it out because it's a little bit rude, a little bit um, overdue for him to like, walk in and say, I'm great. I'm great. Look what I did. So it's all of those things where you can't say and you can't speak so often. I mean, persuasion is all about that. It's a whole book about yeah. that. So it's it's those sort of things. Are, and, you know, that's and, what really hooks into the game. And in opposition, you know, with uh, with mm. with um, uh, uh, Regency, you've you've got this from 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 what we've looked at, from what we've we've been able to kind of. Um, recognize in terms of that social confines the traps there the playability the options everything you're saying there about these rules they are rules and there are restrictions but those restrictions and rules create such brilliant 
mm. op- options and opportunities to role play. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about persuasion, uh, reassurance, you know, the, the, the whole scandalous nature of everything. It's not just, as you say, I've seen something. It's a, oh, my God, this has happened. What is society going to think about it? And it, and it's very important as well to know that, you know, player characters have a tendency to go, oh, yeah, but I'm the maverick, I'm the lone wolf, I'm not going to follow these rules, I'm like, I'm like, you know, you can't. <laughs> yeah. All that gets you in Regency is never invited anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's it's not, you know, you, one one bad, you know, thing, I'm just going to break the rules, I'm going to do it. The, the only time you particularly see it in the novels and is, to my mind, Henry Tilney in Northanger Abbey, best Jane Austen heroine, forget Darcy, it's rubbish. Um, that's, that's today's <laughs> controversy. Um, but he comes up to um, Catherine in the, it's Catherine, isn't it? in the, when nobody's talking to them in Bath. And says hi i should introduce myself i'm henry you look like you're bored and on your own i should introduce myself without an introduction like, from a without an intro- chaperone without, or a parent he starts, he starts chatting to this pretty young woman and her mother and then afterwards oh we're not introduced we should go and get someone to introduce us you know that's the regency equivalent of him riding in on a motorbike throwing on the back and powering off into the sunset yeah uh, and it's that i mean that's how re- rebellious you can get and everyone's going but yeah so you can break the rules yeah. if you're good and if you're still polite and you still follow all the rest of the rules but how you navigate that is extremely complicated and designedly so for various other reasons of class yeah. things which you can do later <laughs> um but uh but yeah it, it's that anti-player character thing of like no no i'm going to break the rules no you're not yeah, well, <laughs> you're really not society won't look too fondly on yeah. that um okay brilliant thank you for that uh, mm. uh andrew um so um, the next question is from of our one of our many, many Reddit uh, users and followers. Uh, this is from Legal Dan. Uh, and the question is, does Chaosium discuss um, for additional resources for settings such as Regency Cthulhu, or is this down to sale numbers? Well, it's, I'm not so much in the inner circle of Chaosium. I know all their, their deep plans. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the Council of Black Cloaked figures led by Mike Mason. And, they don't know each other. It's because of the hoods, yeah, the ceremonial yeah, yeah. gathering I've, I've tables. Never, I've never been party to the Grey Council uh, and their true true ways. But uh, certainly my experience on this book has been a mixture of um, basically Lynn Hardy going, oh, Regency. Uh, so, yeah. I sent, I sent in, uh, a, there's a long, sto- it's a long story about a, a friend of mine. We now, because we're very old and we don't really want anything for birthdays. My thing now, we're gearing up to do this again this year, is my friend James um, suggested that we always want to do his birthdays on Halloween. So every year now, my birthday present to him is he picks a setting and I write a Cthulhu adventure and we play on his birthday, which, you know, it's a very cool birthday, Halloween. We get together and play Cthulhu till midnight. Um, so it's like a straight one-off, and he just picks the setting, and then I write it. So we've done all kinds. We've done Roman, we've done Regency, we've done all kinds of other. We're doing space alien stuff. Nice. And um, so I had this bank of scenarios, and I, I passed some of the details on to Lynn to say, are any of these interesting? So I thought, actually, I've got all these adventures. They might actually be publishable. You know, some people might like them. I don't know. Um, and I'm a big fan of Regency because I've been mm. working on another book that I still haven't produced. I've been working about, you know, six or eight, nigh on finished. I need, and I can't quite manage to finish it off or manage the monstrosity. Well. And uh, so one of the, the adventures I pitched to Lynn was Regency. And she went, oh, because Lynn's a massive Regency. Yes, yes. And uh, we are actually going to be speaking to Lynn as well. So it's lovely yeah. that we've got the opportunity to speak to both of you as well. So amazing. Exactly. So, and Lynn is amazing anyway. So, so it's, um, so she took this on and it was originally going to be a sort of pamphlet with a little bit with my extra notes, you know, almost like one off booklet adventures. And, uh, and they got a bit into it and went, and then Lynn get back, came back to me and said, could you actually expand it a little bit with more stuff and yeah. another adventure? Yeah. So, and we'll make it a book. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, I can do that. I can do that. Amazing. And then, of course, Lynn's got excited by it as well, and she's added a whole swathe of things as well. Yeah. So we've got footage, and she's added bits, and she's fiddled with it as well. So there's loads of extra stuff from from what I created as well, um, and the book just sort of developed from there. So it's, I think, to a certain degree, we, there's that element of uh, with Bridgerton being popular at the moment. Yeah, it was a good time to do a Regency book. But we've also had a lot of regency in game elegic because when I when I was doing my management monstrosity book, I would have been the first if I'd got it out there in time. There's a moral for you. And just <laughs> as I was about to get it sorted, um, 
story brewers created Good Society, which is stunning work. Um, if you read the you should check it out. But it completely pulled the wind out of myself. It's like, ah, yeah, they've done it and they've done it really well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, my book even needs, I mean, mine is very different, mine's more horror oriented. Yeah. Um, but it's those sort of things go, right, well, I'll, I'll hold on for a little bit and I'll do some more work on it and then, you know, around it. So, uh, and yeah, and there's, and every time there's something else, Regency comes up. So I was yeah. sitting on the pile of Regency um, material and research that I've been doing beforehand. So this is quite a quick one to do. And of course, we were also, I think, at the time in the midst of lockdown. So yes. I, was the, yeah. I was one of the very lucky, I mean, I count myself very, very lucky in this category. That I was one of the writers who was happy at that time, just locked myself in my computer. And I was actually quite prolific during lockdown, but I know oh, not wow. Just were so strange. They just couldn't write. They just couldn't do it. So I count myself very lucky to have been able to still focus and uh, and have the time because my work. I wasn't going to go work in theatre any time during that. Yeah, no, exactly. So I you know, thankfully I was furloughed and I had the option to just be a full time games writer for a year and um, and you know cracked into that it. That sounds and done, amazing. Which, that, yeah, yeah. in that sense, it was. That's what, how was you do lockdown. Day. That's how you do lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but I do know an awful lot of other writers like I can't write. I, I my brain's just fuzzed all the yeah. stuff. Going, I can't do it. For me, it was the way of of shutting down. And I I could go into Regency yeah. or or in my case Opera House, another game that I um, a theatre role playing game that I put together oh, wow. that had been sitting for like you know twenty years in my back burner. And never yeah. And I just sat down because again theatre in, being in crisis at the time and still not too yeah. far off um I, I was like this felt like a thing i wanted to do for it so um so yeah i got quite prolific in that one well, and, just uh, jumping back on that then so um i mean as you say you you don't have uh, perhaps one of the hooded robes at the uh, the the yes. annual uh, chaosium meeting uh, uh, led by uh, the wonderful mike mason uh, but yeah i i think i think you've kind of answered the question there in in that you've addressed Regency has this as a, as a genre, as a setting, as a point of interest, as, as in a contemporary point of societal interest. I think it's just there. It just ticks over. So um, I've got two questions now, and they're almost a bit, little bit linked, uh, Andrew. They are actually from some of our cast members. So the Miskatonic Playhouse is Cults and Culpability. Uh, this is our, our podcast that we're going to have running, um, uh, um, and it should be out now. So check it out, listeners. Um, Lydia, who plays uh, Charlotte Lambert, uh, has asked, when researching for the book, uh, The Regency Cthulhu, what was something about the period that surprised you? But as an additional question, because I, I really think that they do link here. So uh, Phaedra um, has asked us, uh, Phaedra uh, is, um, she's one of our, our kind of players and she plays uh, Anastasia Prido. Uh, this is the kind of the family that we follow, the Prido family. And she's asked you in terms of that research, what surprised you? She's asking, what was one of the most sinister things that you uncovered with your research? And is it in the book? Oh. Well, the, the surprising thing is, is kind of a, a weird statistic that I noticed. I was looking up, uh, and it's, it was almost like some, just simply disappointing. I did find in one of the books I was reading, it had detail on the percentages of the wealthy, the aristocracy, the middle class, because as we know, um, Jane Austen, everyone likes to think that if they were in the Regency, they'd be just like Jane Austen's characters. No, sadly, you probably wouldn't. Um, <laughs> Most people are unspeakably poor, living in you know muddy villages uh, on other people's lands. Jane Austen's characters are massively privileged, um, and not even middle class. But actually, because there is no real middle class at this point, it, they are the the bottom end of the nobility. And uh, and I wondered what the statistics were, because of course the Jane Austen characters are beholden to the the actual nobility, the really big landowners, the really wealthy ones. And I found this table that sort of percentageized the population. And quite interestingly, that the what we consider Jane Austen's characters are in the top six percent. But I also noticed the nobility was the one percent. And I thought, wow, things haven't changed since <laughs> you know, two or three hundred years, and it's still the one percent. They're yeah. no bigger, they're no smaller, it's the same, same numbers, um wow. same people. So that one was a little bit of a, oh yeah. Yeah, in one sense, not really a surprise, but a surprise at the same time. I suppose if you're keepering yeah. Regency, you know, if someone's out there and they've just bought the book, uh, and they're keepering, it's it's a it's a good parallel to have, a good parallel to contemporary society yeah. is to, is to kind of go. Do you know what? 
obviously uh, technology, uh, etiquette. There are there are huge differences and great role playing things to jump into. But in terms of the the state of the nation or the state of the class system, there are some yeah you know, the similarities there that we can build upon and you can pull out. And and obviously, that class system can it can uh, bring about it a very lovely kind of conflict, something for characters to kind yeah. of explore. Um, okay, we're going to um, jump to our last question now. Uh, and the last question is, um, or maybe second to last, I might ask you one, being selfish. Uh, the, 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 the question here from Stu, he's, he's, our, he's our producer at the, the Miskatonic Playhouse. Uh, he says, are there uh, any other time periods that you would like to see as a Call of Cthulhu setting? Oh, all of them. <laughs> um, so many cool I, I love to squash about being bigger. One of my favourite Cthulhu adventures ever was one by Marcus o, Marcus Rowland called The Last Log. There was a science fiction one that was where you'd landed on this uh, planet where the, an old survey expedition had not had stopped to sending a signal, and you got you're the rescue team. And it, there's, there's only one Cthulhu monster in it, but it's brilliant. The atmosphere, oh, it's oh, fantastic. Wow. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to do an I a thing where you get out into space as humans and that's where you can find where the biaki actually are and all the other bits and pieces you know space meat becomes actually it might become a scientific potion you can do stuff with if if you actually get out there and discover oh these things are real and we have to interact with them yeah um, and it's not a mystery it's not oh you know oh there may be cthulhu monsters no they're on there we've been to mars it, it's full of them it's scary uh we need to do something about that <laughs> so it would be a really interesting Okay, that does sound, yeah, oh, and that sounds the kind of thing that, mm. because of the scope of it as well, there could be so yeah. much fun with longer, long, longer form stories. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, mm. I'm going to sneak my my question in here then, and this is taking us back to Regency Cthulhu. Um, there are some amazing new mechanics skills uh, in Regency Cthulhu. The the the, the source book, the setting mm. book. Um, I love the the uh, reputation. Uh, system. I love the ranking of reputation and that that it is a changing fixture in the game depending on how you behave. And if you have good reputation, bad reputation, you can get bonus die or, or penalty die. Uh, but for you, um, what's your favorite new? What what is it? What's the the new thing that you bring to Call of Cthulhu? What's your favorite new feature? Well, it's it's a mixture. I'm, I like playing with credit rating because that was that was a lovely skill to just that was already there that you can start then balancing out what people can do and what monetary power people because of course people don't really use money you yeah. went off to go and you know you just went to a shop and said we'll have this and you know, send us the bill and then got really angry when they actually did send you the bill because it's like you're suggesting i don't pay my bills well you haven't for two months so yeah. i yeah uh, would you mind sir paying your bills so, oh, <laughs> away with you young sir you know how um, rude it's how rude, how terribly rude. These people who are obsessed with money, they are obsessed with money. <laughs> so he needs to feed his family. Um, so, yeah, it's all the, those sort of things I love, love working in. Uh, but I must admit, the, the thing that I am most excited about, and this sounds probably pretty odd, is, is there's a new character sheet for it. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know why this, other people might think this is very strange, other people might think, of course this is, but the idea that something of mine has created a new character sheet for Call of Cthulhu with a slightly different skill list and maybe yeah. a different board around it and and the whole whole thing to it. I am, I'm so excited about that. I can't, I cannot tell you. It's like, yeah, the, yeah, the book's coming out. Yeah, it's great. It's really just giving a little bit of like that's going to be like on character sheet places again this is the regency character sheet if you want this one um i'm really excited about that yeah i can I, see that i can see very wrong but no i can see the logic the setting book yeah, yeah and it is gonna it is a wonderful book and yeah, yeah because, the, the, so i'm a cthulhu fan so yeah. it's like i love this game. but the, yeah the keepers and collectors Absolutely. you get the setting book but the player everyone's going to be affected by regency yes. Cthulhu because your player sheet is there and it's unique and new skills and things so new yeah it's not just like my one, you know, by road out the skills or something. <laughs> like, there, they're on there. Though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you are, I mean, you're listening to this because uh, you wanted to listen to Andrew Peregrine and you, hopefully, you're there because you're going, Regency Cthulhu is going to be amazing. And it 
is mm-hmm. we are here to confirm that it is it's a fantastic new um adaptation on some of those skills new new kind of trackers uh and actually really active ones as well which i really like uh, in the game as, as a, you know the example of reputation um so get out there get a copy and uh, you know get playing it's absolutely amazing and you can uh, go onto the um chaosium website and get yourself a copy there thank you very much andrew absolutely oh, yeah. lovely to have you here and um we'll speak to you soon also listeners please check out our podcast on the matinee channel uh that's our very own miskatonic playhouse cults and culpability thank you very much as we draw the curtain on tonight's performance we thank you for joining us and look forward to inviting you back to the miskatonic playhouse in the meantime you can also find us in the links below and if you'd like to submit your scenario for us to play email miskatonicplayhouse at gmail.com